we're not stopping there. It's not the brightest chicken in the coop. Waiting for this day all summer. It has finally gotten below zero degrees, which means it is time to hatch some chicks out. We'll be opening up the hay that we had wrapped this past summer. Come on. Thank you for the suggestion. We're supposed to get a blizzard today. We're gonna start the wood stove today. It is really coming down. It snowed. Not only did it snow, it is actually like below zero. Right now, it's supposed to be like four degrees out there with a real feel of like negative seven. So, and now we're not, we're not stopping there. It's supposed to get down to like negative 13 or so on Saturday and Sunday. I currently have about five layers on here and I'm about to pass out because this scarf that I put on this morning is way too tight. Or better now okay so um <clears throat> it's cold hi you're so cute yes you're such a sweet little sheep aren't you yes guineas are out and about this morning so jocelyn got the chickens all bedded down in here with some corn stalks they're doing good here's charlotte the friendliest chicken of all how you doing charlotte not bad huh so there is your little chicken update i'm not sure where Penel is probably since it's gotten below zero trying to hatch some eggs would be my guess oh, look at this i was right penelope has been waiting for this day all summer. It has finally gotten below zero degrees, which means it is time to hatch some chicks out. I don't know why, but every time it gets below zero, she decides that it is the perfect time to hatch some chicks. She's not the brightest chicken in the coop. Yeah, so in case you don't know, in case you are not familiar with chickens, this is about the worst possible time all year long to try and hatch some eggs like this is the worst time the worst time yet this is the time that penelope waits to try to hatch some eggs i don't know needless to say we do not let her jocelyn works very hard to keep all those eggs away from her and it's not easy because she is quite sneaky about it tom just came down and got the dogs all mad and then snuck inside the house. So you gotta go get him out now. Okay, it is a while later. We are going to go over and feed some hay now. Now I know I've shown you us feeding hay a couple times and you're probably gonna think this is pretty boring, but we are actually doing something a little bit different today. We are gonna be opening up the hay that we had wrapped this past summer. If you have not seen that video where we had it wrapped, I'll link it below in the description and I'll put a card for it right up there. So you can go watch that, but we're gonna be opening that up seeing how that is today so hopefully it kept well should be some really good hay um we do have a couple of bales left in the corn crib but they are a little bit of a rougher hay and when we're going through this really cold weather the cattle need some good hay so we're gonna get them some of that wrapped hay okay here we are we're gonna cut it back horses and the sheep then he's going to come get another one and we're going to put that into the cows okay okay Papa's going to come around in the tractor. We got them fed. Got all the strings taken off. 
It is so, so cold right now. I think it's actually worse than it was earlier this morning because there is a slight breeze now, but when it's this cold, Ah, uh, come on. Okay, so there's water up here on the cattle water. But this is frozen shut. There we go. I don't know if you could see that at all, but I kicked it open. It'll stay open a little while, but as long as they got water on that top part, it doesn't really matter about the bottom part. part as long as they got water somewhere, but uh, the hay that was wrapped is really good hay. Um, the hay we were using just wasn't very good because it was some older hay that we were trying to get used up, but when it's this cold out, the animals have to have some good hay to maintain their energy and keep themselves warm. So we are going to get the sheep put up. Emma has got this bale opened up. She's feeding the horses a little bit of this good hay. Then we're gonna head home. I thought I'd just mention real quick, um, one of my previous videos when I was focusing more on the chores, uh, I showed a clip of me feeding the sheep and the trough was right the trough was right over along that wall and they run over me, it's kind of hard to get to it. Um, someone suggested that I put it against this fence. Uh, thank you for the suggestion, I tried it. I just recently moved this trough in here so I was kind of trying some things out. But, but I tried it out, it works really well. Um, so I don't remember your name, I'm sorry, but thank you for the suggestion. It does really well. So I'm going to give them a little bit of grain and close them up. We're going to head home, get warmed up. Just frozen. Great. This thing does better when it's warm. Wait, the hinge is frozen. Like cold. Great. But I guess you have to have the winter. This thing does better. To appreciate when it's the summer. Warm. Don't like it. Right. Cold. But I guess you have to have the winter to appreciate the summer. Hi. So I think I could just have like right. one day of this to appreciate the summer, but instead of. Ah several months, but yeah. Hi. really cold there's a breeze which makes it even worse and we're supposed to get a blizzard today so we don't know how much snow out we're gonna get but we'll see but we are gonna be starting up the wood stove so we're out here at the wood shed right now we're gonna get some wood if you have been following along you would have seen several videos this summer of us Oh, uh, first of all, getting this woodshed turned into a woodshed, which it used to be a sheep or a lamb shed or steer shed, um, and then also stacking all of this wood. So I don't know how well you can see, but there's a ton of wood in here. So we're gonna get some of the very driest pieces, which would be right back here in this corner, and we're gonna take them up and get the wood stove going. Okay, so it is extremely cold out here this morning. I'm gonna look at the thermometer to see what the actual temperature is. Okay, right at zero degrees. It is extremely cold and it's windy which makes it about ten times worse. My face is about to freeze off right now so I'm gonna get inside and I'll finish talking to you there.
So we're just gonna hunker in. We already got the barn chores done this morning. I left the sheep up um, so that if it snows a bunch and we're not able to get over there this afternoon, they'll be okay. So yeah, we're gonna get the wood stove started. I'll probably show you that. Okay, um, we're gonna start with the wood stove today. To do that, um, we have, so this is a kitchen queen wood stove with the warming rack and there's the warming rack uh, I gotta I gotta turn the camera at me so I know where it's at so I can show you good so there's the warming rack uh, this is just for the uh, lid lifter and I'll show it to you and then we'll get her crunk up here and there's one over here we have an extra handle that's our bacon press we love bacon presses and it also works well for uh, pushing patties, uh, hamburger patties. Um, so I have that there. This is a, <laughs> I don't know if y'all know what this is. This is a bread, bread toaster. So you put a slice of bread right there and right there and you can leave it here. And it'll toast your bread and you just turn it around and toast your bread. So that is a bread toaster. These are little heat operated. These are no batteries. They work completely off of heat. And we have these in storage and brought them out. And we'll point them this way and blow the heat that way in there to the piano room and back to the bedrooms. And we'll let it circle around. So that's that. We have our wood here. And now this cured wood that's been cured for three years. That's good dry wood. That's the oven side. We, we kind of store our cast iron in here. So that's the oven side. We did run the heat last night. It is, I don't know if you can see that, 69 in here, but down closer to the floor is probably like 64, 65. Currently it's, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Let's see if you can see it. Um, there we go. Uh, yeah. Winter Wonderland, uh, 20, 25 mile per hour wind, seven degrees so pretty cold outside and we are supposed to have quite a bit of quite a bit of uh, snow coming in today so this is the wood side and I don't know if you can see that real well uh, but we have wood in here a lot of wood and these are <laughs> we kind of during the summer when we have french fries and mama puts the french fries on paper towels and then the paper towels kind of get oil on them that's our fire starter so this has been in here all summer it's nice and warm it's ready to go so it'll heat up real fast we've cribbed that wood it's nice and dry so we'll shut that we'll open this is one damper we can open there's a damper down here we can open it lets more air in and then the big damper is back here to let it up the chimney and we have a seven inch chimney so we can open this thing up but we have a water heater back here too and this thing will boil water it surrounds the back of the here and that is the so you have to have water in it so we're going to take this bucket right here and I'll be right back with you in a minute and we're gonna put water in here and you see what happens is let me show you it here's our spout for the water if you can see that and you can just turn it on and off and you get some hot water but it uh this this is tied in right here and it's tied in right here and then it, what it does is it's got a coil that comes in. I don't know if we'll be able to see it in here. But it comes into the wood box and it's right over here, circles through. So you have to have water in that. You have to have water in this reservoir so that it can cycle through the wood box. Or else it'll just really overheat everything. This is not potable water, meaning drinking water. You have to use it. I mean, you could use it for a bath, but you could use it for, uh, I tell you what we use it mostly for is actually thawing out uh, cattle drinkers <laughs> when they freeze up or anything else that's hot. 
So you can just about get it boiling. And when that stove is going, uh, you can really, you don't need to boil off any other water. So we're going to at least put five gallons in there. We'll probably put, I don't know, 15 gallons in there. And it really holds some heat. So we have our steamer here. We usually run that, but it's getting turned off now because we usually typically have, have something boiling to add some moisture to the air. So this thing will thermocycle, so heat rises and cool sinks, both air and water. So the hottest water will be near the surface, and so the cool water, and it, it just ends up pushing itself through to where this is a nice water heater. But unfortunately, if you have the stove on, you have to have water in the tank. So, when we start up this stove, it's a serious matter. I mean, it's not just, hey, let's have a couple logs in the fireplace, cutesy wootsy little fire for a couple times. This is a process, and this will go from 64 degrees to 84 degrees pretty quick. So, we don't just start this every other day just for a little bit of a uh, sentimental time. So, the other thing about starting a fire is the science of chimneys. We have a 12 foot chimney and we, we, we did this one right because this, this is a beast. We're extended above the roof line and you need enough pipe to create the draw. Like I said, hot air rises. So right now that, that air is cold and when we get that chimney heated up, it'll pull air out of the house and up. But until you get that pull, that's called the draw of a chimney, until you get that pull, it, you can have smoke pulling back into the house. So when you're starting a fire, first you need good wood. And lots of times, our house is so tight. The old houses weren't, and lots of people's old farmhouses aren't, and they'll have a wind, and they'll be actually wind pushing into this house and pushing air up the chimney. So lots of times we'll have to crack a window to allow a little air to get in here to where it pushes air up the chimney. And the reason we want to do that is because we want to push that smoke up the chimney. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put, we're, we may have to do that. And we'll get this started and of course start down low and um, it will get itself in there. So if it starts smoking and pulling back, you will want to crack a window or open a door that you know leaks air in and have everything opened up. You want everything wide open to let all the smoke possible go up the chimney. So what I do is instead of cutting that door real tight, I, I will just leave it cracked a little bit. And then if there's any smoke start drifting back at all, crack a door, let the air come in here enough to push it up then you do need to go outside and make sure first time you start up a stove that the smoke's going out the chimney that somehow a bird didn't get in there or something like that to plug your chimney so right now it's all looking pretty good okay we are up to right here that's 10 gallons so this could hold maximum 30 gallons but it holds 20 gallons real easy and um, it holds heat and radiates heat way after the stove is is uh but the wood has burned out so that's kind of nice and we'll probably add some more in here as it gets warm um we're going to step outside we're going to set the sparkling grape juice this new year's and we didn't do this last night so we're going to have it today but we're going to set the uh spark sparkling grape juice and sparkling apple juice out here while we check to make sure the smoke's going out the chimney but so you can take note here of these little guys we just started it five minutes ago and they're, they don't push a whole lot of air, but it's definitely air is pushing off of here. So they're, they're warm. Here's the fire here. It's definitely heating up and we'll get that hot. Um, and it's starting to pull air already. So we will chill our sparkling grape juice and sparkling apple juice. And um, the girls will feel special having this later. And then we'll double check to make sure that we got it going out the chimney. Okay. 
It's chilly. Okay. And a cool down. And no fires. It's burning clean. You can kind of see the smoke going. And it's cold. So everything looks good and we'll just let her warm up. Okay, snow's coming down. There you go. I don't know if you can see that. But it is really coming down. But we are cozy in here, so the fans are running. You probably can't see that either, but you can maybe hear them. So when you open up a stove, Open the damper all the way. It sends as much smoke as you can. Crack the door a little bit. And she's burned down and hot coals. So that's starting up the stove. It's been running for a little bit. We'll come over here. And we're up to 75 pretty soon. There we go. So that's that. Thanks for watching. And stay tuned. We'll try to find some fun stuff to show you this winter.